We have a host of procedures that we offer to patients who lose a breast secondary to cancer. Uh, a lot of those procedures have been tried and true and involved um, technologies like an implant-based reconstruction, things that have been around for many, many years. However, there are a host of patients who formerly weren't amenable to reconstruction because of the way their body was shaped specifically or because of prior surgeries that they may have had. So historically, those are patients that wouldn't be able to undergo breast reconstruction. Fortunately, now we're at a stage where we do have other options available to us where we can use parts of the body to rebuild a breast. These parts of the body were areas that formerly we didn't know we could utilize them in order to build a breast, but now we can. And so it offers the ability to, um, for this complex subset of patients, to offer them a reconstructive option where they formerly would, have, would not have had one. And flaps refer to us being able to take tissue from one part of the body and move it to another. So we can now design flaps from these areas and transfer them to the chest to give these patients uh, breast restoration uh, where we formerly would not have been able to do that. We have several flap options available to us now that have really been described only in the last 10, 15 years or so, but are really getting more widespread adoption clinically. So one of the beauties of these types of procedures is, it, is the downstream morbidity associated with taking tissue from one part, of the, one part of the body to another is fairly minimal. These, all of these types of procedures um, either don't involve sacrifice of any muscle at all or will sometimes involve sacrifice of very small segments of muscle. So functionally, for example, any flap that we take from the thigh doesn't in the long run inhibit any type of thigh activity. Patients can still run, ride bikes, row, whatever the case may be, swim, uh, do ballet, yoga, all the kind of general activities that people like to do and find pleasure in doing. And so that is a great aspect of this is that once patients go through the recovery phase, there's very little, if at all, functional compromise down line. The PAP flap uh, stands for Profunda Artery Perforator Flap. It comes from the back side of the thigh, right at the base of the buttock. And we essentially take a wedge of tissue from this area on its native blood supply. So it's almost like a kite of tissue that we create. And we remove it entirely from the back side of the thigh, close up that area so the patient has a scar that's pretty inconspicuous, located right at the crease of the buttock. And we transfer that tissue and then shape it into a breast mound and attach it utilizing microsurgical techniques um, to blood vessels that are up in the chest primarily. So we're taking tissue from an area that historically is a spot that a lot of patients aren't so excited to have some excess and we utilize that to rebuild a breast where they're very, very happy to have some degree of restoration. Hug and the Doug flaps alternately refer to tissue designs that we can take from the inner part of the thigh as opposed to the back side of the thigh. Um, they, Tug stands for transverse upper gracilis and Doug stands for diagonal upper gracilis flap. They just are variations on the same theme where instead of taking it from the back side, like the pap, we take it from the medial side of the thigh. There are patients who have more tissue available in one part of the thigh than the other. So this gives us options that we can customize to the specific patient based on where they have that excess tissue available. The other category of flaps that we are actually really excited about now are what are called innervated flaps. Innervated flaps refer to a modification of standard flap designs where we incorporate the native nerve supply into the flap itself and transfer that and hook it up in the chest as well. So classically, when we design a breast reconstruction from another part of the body, we're able to take tissue, including skin and fat and the native blood supply. But generally, when we do that transfer, when we move it from one part of the body to the other, we don't take with it the nerve supply. So when that tissue is transferred to the chest, for example, the patient doesn't necessarily feel things normally again with the reconstructed breast. There's a emerging set of techniques now, however, where we're able to simultaneously take not only the skin and the fat, but also determine the actual constituent nerves that supply that area. And we hook those nerves up in the chest as well, with the ideal result of being the patient not only has restoration of form, but also has restoration of sensation. So the reconstruction not only looks normal again, but it actually starts to feel normal again, which is a huge additional psychological plus for many, many patients. 
So breast reconstruction is available to all women uh, provided they have an interest in it and provided they have access to the resources that are required for breast reconstruction. So here in the United States, the right to undergo a consultation with a reconstructive surgeon is guaranteed by law for women who have breast cancer. Now, not all women choose to undergo reconstruction, but all are offered the opportunity assuming that they have an interest in it.